My name is Katie Quinn, and I would describe myself as an intrepid adventurer, um, risk taker, and uh, yeah. Favorite things to do generally involve um, being active in the outdoors. Um, definitely uh, in love with the outdoors and in, in, in every season. What would you say if you could choose a, what would be your favorite thing to do in the outdoors? Favorite thing to do in the outdoors? Um, I'm going to say that would revolve around paddling. I started to go on some outings with the uh, with the outdoor rec club, and uh, the very first day I was in white water, uh, I was instantly hooked. Um, it was just so interesting and so dynamic and, and uh, confusing and, and scary and fun all at the same time. When I moved on from uh, teachers college and went back home, um, I sought out a job whereby I could uh, you know um, nurture my connection and, and grow my connection with white water. Do you have a uh, favorite moment of uh, white water rock trick or anything that's to you in particular? Favorite moments? Um, I, I, I think there's too many to mention. Uh, I think that there's just there's just so many moments where you're above a rapid and your heart's beating and your adrenaline's charged. Um, but one of the things I really like about whitewater rafting is that it, kayaking is a really individual sport. And when it comes to rafting, it, you're really responsible for the people who are in your in your uh, in your boat in your raft, and uh, it's a team effort. I may spend six hours with the people in my raft and. Uh, and I want them, I want to be the voice of rivers, because uh, rivers don't speak for themselves. So when I have the opportunity to have people in my raft um, for six hours, I really want them to know a lot more about the natural world and the natural environment and, and the river uh, and the world around them than when they started with me in the morning. Um, I was really fortunate in working in the industry for so long because I was working for a company uh, that owned a great deal of land in the area and I had inquired about you know maybe just a small lot um, wasn't thinking I was going to afford necessarily waterfront and the more I thought about it the more I was just like wow I want to wake up you know every morning and, and greet the river uh, yeah so that brought me to just uh, to what I, I, my last name is Quinn and I joke and I call it Quinner Sippy at Kitchissippi because um, the name of the Ottawa River by the indigenous um, people who uh, lived there originally, the Algonquin people, uh, they called it the Great River and their word for the Great River was the Kitchissippi River. So I joke and call it Quinner Sippy at Qu uh, Kitchissippi. Um, so that kind of got the start to, to my uh, building cabins. A good friend from the canyon, Ian, uh, he is a very talented timber framer. So uh, he and his wife uh, live in a timber frame home. In their, in their efforts to help me out, they ended up building uh, a timber frame. Um, and that's just the outside skeleton of the building. And uh, that stage of the building was really cool because it was almost like a traditional barn raising event. Um, we called everybody we knew. Um, that could help out to move these timbers uh, down down the hill and, and get them into position. And it was such a glorious day of, of teamwork and, uh, and everyone helping out. Favorite moment overall was the, was the timber raising. I was so humbled by all of the friends that gathered to help out and, and every person there had a role and every person there was there to help out and uh, it was such a happy day. Um, just, I was so worried that it wasn't gonna go well. And uh, it's amazing, sometimes when you look at, I think about what I do 
in a day as a teacher and I think okay yeah that was a good day or not but you don't really see um, the fruits of your labor but at the end of this day it was just like mind blown just like wow look at this structure it was it was just like kind of something out of a movie um, so I think that 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 was a great moment my uh, my building a cabin story is not without uh, a great tragedy we started off with something that wasn't going to really require a permit um, and then the ideas grew and and, uh, and flourished and then we ended up with a structure that was larger uh, than we had originally planned. My neighbors built a couple cabins and they lived locally and they didn't have building permits for their cabins. So I didn't want to be that neighbor that, that got a permit and we thought, oh man, we're, it takes 15 minutes to get down this road. Nobody's coming down this road. And so we started building and much to our dismay, uh, there were some people ca uh, canoeing by and they ended up um, reporting that, that there was building happening. So we ended up uh, getting in trouble with the, with the building inspector and with the municipality. So they said, listen, you got to move that cabin or, or you got to tear it down. And I was like, cabin, that's a boathouse. And they said, okay, great. You can have a boathouse, but you can't have it without a real cabin, like a, a permanent dwelling there. So I had to put that on hold. Um, and, and go to the other cabin. And once that satisfied, I, I got out of uh, municipal uh, bylaw jail uh, or penalty box. I wasn't actually in jail, but a penalty box, we'll go with that. Um, and then they allowed me to finish the boathouse. So it ended, ended up tarped for two years. And when we finally had permission to finish the other build and get cracking on um, uh, the boathouse, the eco build, uh, it was, it was pretty cool. So the off the grid piece was very, uh, really, really appealing to me. I have a, a background of indigenous uh, roots. Uh, my, my family background is, is partially Métis. And any chance I have to be back to, to nature and trying to be kinder, more kind to the earth, um, is, uh, is really appealing to me. So as much, as many materials as I could recycle, upcycle, um, reuse, uh, I did so. So uh, the doors, the windows, nothing was purchased new that way. I, I had so many amazing people uh, helping me out with tools and giving me their time for, for uh, just volunteerism or just super, super good wages. So um, between not having to buy a lot of tools and having so much human resource help through friends who, I mean, and Mike, uh, Forte, I'm forever indebted to his son Adam. If if uh, your names ever make the cut for this film, like, cannot say thank you enough. But just through doing so much of it myself and with the help of friends, uh, that really cut down on materials and, uh, and and upcycling and recycling. So those were the keys. There's you know a number of times like the electrical work and the uh, foundation. I needed to. Uh, enlist more support and more help that way but a lot of the other stuff was was just uh, you know just figuring things out as I went. Great. Y'all good? Don't want to like stop for a bit or nothing? <laughs> I'm good. Just want to make sure. I want to grab a beer. <laughs> don't wanna, if you want to honestly yeah. <laughs> Cheers Mikey. <laughs> Another example and I still actually have to I need to go and find this farmer and thank him immensely. So the um, siding and the floor for the boathouse and the, the siding for the river house um, came from this, this random farmhouse that was almost like a human rat trap. Like it was needed to come down. Like it was ready to fall. And you know, it was in the middle of this cornfield. And my friend would drive by it and, and look at the tin roof and go, wow, that's a beautiful roof. And, uh, and so one day, Sure enough, the house fell. And in this cornfield was this rubble of all kinds of brick and all kinds of uh, like metal tin, um, just this rusted out tin. So we went there and we peeled the tin off the roof and we pulled the bricks out uh, from the rubble and put them in a wheelbarrow and put them in my uh, trailer and, and brought them back to uh, back to the property 
and it was too hard to take the bricks down the hill because it was such a steep hill. So we put bricks in a kayak and slid the kayaks down like a toboggan run down to the building. But um, those were huge uh, recycled um, gains as far as expense goes. Saved a lot of money and it looks awesome. A confidence to pursue a life kind of like a have. Um, I came from a massive family. I have a big, big family and uh, I have a lot of siblings. Um, I'm ninth born in my family order. And uh, so as the baby for a number of years, uh, I really had to be kind of scrappy and kind of like, you know, I had to be confident um, and, and have my voice heard amongst the crowd as a little kid. So I guess I kind of always just kept that scrappiness with me a little bit. And then just by circumstance, I, I didn't, I wasn't sure growing up if I wanted to have a family, if I wanted to get married, if I wanted to have kids. And, uh, and it just never really, never really worked out. And, uh, and, and I wasn't really tied to the idea of being married and having kids anyway. And instead I chose a role of a, of a loving being an aunt and, and, uh, and loving up, uh, uh, being a part of many different families. I guess it was just kind of a natural confidence because I thought, well, I'm not going to sit around and, and, and hope for a ha family to happen if I'm not even fully invested. So I just kind of did whatever I wanted and I just wanted adventure and I wanted to have fun and I wanted to, to be one with nature. So I just kind of went out there and got it because I was kind of used to, as a little kid in a family of nine kids, I was just kind of used to like, if I wanted something, I needed to go out and get it because nothing was given to me, nothing was, was handed to me. So I guess I just kind of um, just got really fortunate with, with working really hard and, and, uh, and kind of going after what I, was, what I wanted to do. I saw a candle recently that said the cool ant. It, it said, like, smells like wine and like, you know, inappropriate stories. So I was like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Best advice, uh, life is short. Um, yeah, try not to sweat the small stuff and, and uh, try and make the most of every day. Every day is a gift that you have uh, and, and, and life goes by quickly. So, you know, if you think you're having a bad day because you have like, I don't know, you're running late or something, you're not really having a bad day. Um, you'll know when you're having a bad day and that's gonna be when something really important happens. So. Uh, just really try and use every day to the very best of your abilities and uh, yeah you, uh, you can't stop the waves but you can learn how to surf so make the most of everything. Yeah. <laughs>